Thanks again for joining me. So today we're making something called mi xiao. Okay, mi xiao literally means uh, Siamese noodles, which is a little bit of a, I guess, a little bit counterintuitive if you are here to watch a Malaysian cook along. Okay, mi xiao is actually a Malaysian dish as far as I know. And I don't know why it's called Siamese noodles. It may actually be a Malaysian version of the Thai um, mi grok, right? I don't know, okay? I, <laughs> I like to eat, but I don't necessarily research the, uh, you know, all, all these dishes. So what we're going to do, uh, we are going to be using vermicelli, okay? This is the one that we're using. It says rice vermicelli, you can see it, okay? Sometimes it's just labeled rice stick, and there are a number of different brands out there, and you should be able to easily find these nowadays. So these are dried and there are a few different ways to use vermicelli. In this particular recipe, we're actually going to soak them in hot water. Okay, so let's do that. And I want to mention also with mi siam because uh, we're going to actually cook as we cook. And I want to mention that there are actually a couple of versions of mi siam. And this particular version, like I said, is the dry, dry version, okay? Or mi siam goreng, sometimes it's called, it's called fried mi siam. There's a version of mi siam, which I did not grow up eating, but it was um, a, a saucy mi siam that I came across uh, just over the course of researching Malaysian food when I was after I moved to Australia. And that mi siam with the sauce is very different. Uh, it's got a, a bit of a sweet and sour sauce that goes over it. That's not what we're making today, okay? So we're making the dried version. We're not just making the dried version. We're not even making the version I used to sell, which was the dried version. We're making an even more simplified version, which actually is the version that I think probably closely replicates what my stepmom actually cooks for Christmas every year. So every year at my family big get together, we each are uh, allocated something to bring and my, my stepmom's version of mi siam is what she actually usually brings, okay? I'm just wondering if I should cook more than that. Okay, so you see these look like these, okay? Like cakes and I have seen, when I first came to Australia, I watched her breakfast television and one of uh, this Australian celebrity chef who ironically is one of my friends now because just how long ago that was like over 30 years ago I saw her on television and I was screaming bloody murder at what she was doing to, with these vermicelli but uh, what she was doing was uh, she was using she was boiling them for a soupy dish I guess and she had a pot of boiling water and she just threw this and boiled it straight like that and I was horrified, okay? But nowadays, I'm a little bit more relaxed about it. But what we would typically do in Malaysia, we wouldn't boil it straight from a hard, dry uh, uh, condition, okay? Let's, uh, let's do another one, okay? <laughs> let's do this. Okay, what you want to do, usually you would actually just put it under hot water. So we're going to do that. And... I've got some water from the kettle and we're just going to soak this for a few minutes, okay? So like I said, this is not the only way to use these noodles. Yeah, you've seen, if you follow some of my broadcasts previously, you can actually uh, soak them and then pan fry them or you can don't, not soak them and actually fry them dry, okay? They produce different results for different types of um, users in uh, my kind of cooking. But today we're actually going to soak them and then we're going to stir fry them, okay? So that's that. And what we want, the, if you've got the event ingredients list that I posted a couple of days ago, you will see a mention of uh, dried shrimp. Now, dried shrimp is optional. I've made it optional because like I said, I want to make it easy, okay? I want to make it so that the kind of ingredients you need for these cook-alongs are stuff that you can pick up at your local supermarket instead of something that you have to go to, you know, <laughs> places you may not necessarily shop at to pick up okay especially in this kind of like restricted movement environment of our new reality um, but this is what the dried shrimp look like that I use okay as a business owner based in Australia selling Malaysian food this is what I use this dried shrimp is actually from uh, I believe Vietnam <laughs> okay so you see this it, now, most Malaysians who actually cook Malaysian food 
overseas, like in Australia, they try and basically essentially get the same things that they used to use in Malaysia. They might even bring dried shrimp home with them uh, from a visit back in Malaysia, right, sort of thing. Uh, but you will find that dried shrimp nowadays can be quite expensive, okay? So if you're using it for a business, like I, I, I did back when I had my restaurant, it wasn't practical to be putting like bags and bags of dried shrimp in your luggage when you came back from your overseas trip. So you had to actually make do with what was available locally. And what's available locally at a decent price point is this type of dried shrimp. They're tiny dried shrimp, okay? And this is what it looks like. Okay, got it? So you can find this because this is a... <laughs> this is like the budget version of dried shrimp. Um, it's actually a little bit less dry than your average dried shrimp that is shelf stable. So because it's a little less dry, it actually needs to be kept refrigerated or frozen. So you need to look in the fridge or freezer section of your Asian grocery store, a well-stocked Asian grocery store, to find these, okay? Uh, whereas the higher quality grade ones, ones from Malaysia, they'll be much bigger and you should be able to find them on the shelf like without needing refrigeration okay but the dried shrimp back in the day used to be considered kind of like poor people's food but nowadays it's actually quite a, a, a you know gotten a little bit expensive but um, if you can't get a hold of it so dry shrimp is just shrimp that's been dried in the sun with like salt right you can't get a hold of it i mentioned in the ingredients list just use normal shrimp and especially get tiny shrimp if you want right just and and you want to actually kind of um, mince it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got the dried shrimp. We want some garlic. It's an alternate to dried shrimp. I just use fresh shrimp. I've seen people just use fresh shrimp, right? So you can do that um, and just season it in, you know, season your dish so that it's not going to be, yeah, it's gonna be, it's got that flavor, right? So again, we're using dried shrimp because I have some around, but if you don't, just don't stress out about it. Because again, remember, lockdown theme cook-alongs. Let's pull this over. Okay, so we've got some garlic over here. I don't probably need quite so many garlic. Okay, and then we've got onion. Okay, so what we're going to do, uh, if you've got dried chilies, you want to actually, if you've seen my previous broadcast, you know I like to actually boil the dried chilies until they're soft and then we blend them into a paste, right? We're not gonna do that today because I'm only using a little bit. So again, like I said, we're adapting, we're keeping things simple. I have a lot of chili, I have a lot of fresh chili in my fridge. There's chili plus salt plus garlic, fresh chili. We're just gonna add some of this to it, okay? So, and if you've seen my previous broadcast, I talk about this whole rumpa spice, mix, uh, spice paste mix, and it's pretty straightforward, okay? and usually it'll comprise of a variety of spices. Invariably, they'll involve onion and garlic and sometimes uh, chili, uh, a lot of time chili in fact, and sometimes uh, other stuff like lemongrass, ginger and all that. So today we're just using this. We're gonna add the dry shrimp to it and we're gonna add some chili sauce, okay? Just let me turn this on. Okay, so this is my new Thermocook Pro M. And I know the company's busy, so I did in fact eventually write them, but I haven't heard back, okay, which is understandable considering it took me weeks to write to them. But they are offering one of these in principle to one of you guys who follow my cook along, so make sure you sign up to my uh, email list that's set, uh, uh, set aside for it. Okay, so the dry shrimp, typically you would soak them in hot water and then you would strain them out, okay? And if you like, in fact, you probably don't need to mince this because they're already so tiny, but I, I wanted it just to be a little bit consistent in the texture. Um, and the other ingredient you'll find a lot of time in mee siam is something called a uh, ground bean paste, okay? It's like a preserved brick bean paste. We're not using that today. Again, because we're keeping it simple, I did used to have it in my restaurant recipe for mee siam, but today we are keeping it very simple. So, the key uh, source of flavor 
will come from this rumba mix okay so if you have your dried chilies you will separately dried chilies even after soaking and all that you do want to actually blend them separately instead of adding it to this because the other ingredients in here are quite soft okay whereas dried chilies are a little bit leathery sometimes okay so you want to blend them separately with a little bit of water and then just add it together okay i wouldn't personally put them in here because you might find that they don't process properly okay so we've got these let's blitz it and again hey shafiq apa kabar okay so let's blitz this Voila, easy enough. Move this away. And now, insofar as the vegetables, I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned, uh, I haven't checked, but I've had a big day. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I had bean sprouts listed in the vegetables, but I did have time to pick some bean sprouts out. So if you're cooking along at home, Add some bean sprouts in, but I won't be, okay? I, I, I've only got some herbs from my garden, so coriander and spring onion. So that's what we're going to use. But, okay, so you've got the dried shrimp or a uh, small shrimp that you're going to blend in there. Separately, you're going to have larger shrimp that you're going to actually cook, okay? So these are the nice ones. We're just going to peel them. Uh, if I were doing this for my restaurant, I would actually peel it all the way down to the tail but leave the tail intact but because I'm cooking this for personal consumption at home I'm gonna take the whole thing off okay I'm not gonna be all fancy about it I love bean sprouts uh, people are so polarized about bean sprouts it's funny um, you either love it or hate it regards from Malaysia me same a problem oh hey how are you Jenny <laughs> okay cool yeah like I say the the number of iterations of me siam you can go the fancy route and add the tamarind and add the ground bean paste and all that um, which was how I did it in my restaurant and you can make the saucy one where you have the tamarind sauce separately you pour it over the noodles before you <coughs> before you serve it up I'm losing my voice for whatever reason um, but today we're just making a simple mee siam that's going to be just fried up <coughs> and like uh, Jenny was saying this is a popular breakfast dish so this is going to be a fairly simple one okay the nice touch about this is going to be the egg omelette and we're going to make that as well again we're keeping it simple um i think a lot of the time there are a lot of steps that can be simplified in malaysian cooking that are not going to impact on the overall outcome okay so it, by the way if you don't know how to peel shrimp um there's my nice big shrimp here you kind of like find where the head meets the body just kind of lift your finger underneath the head and just pull it up like this and then underneath where all the feelers are again you peel it like this okay you see the way i peel it this is how much of the shrimp you salvage that would have otherwise ended up in the prawn heads okay and don't throw out your prawn heads if you watch my my prawn noodle soup broadcast from a couple of weeks ago you never ever throw out your prawn shells okay and in fact if you want to know how to make the sambal belacan that goes really well with this we're not going to do it today because i just do it did it like two weeks ago for my other broadcast go back and watch my prawn noodle soup broadcast where i showed you how to separately make sambal belacan as well okay so we've got these shrimp here and we're going to actually just cut them along their side okay and devein them okay it's not much happening in so far as the vein is concerned okay and by the way uh especially if you're from malaysia if you're anything like me you come you go and you move overseas I think a lot of us are unaware of how myopic our views are with regards to Malaysian cuisine. Okay, I came from Seremban, and a certain way of doing chakwe tiao in Seremban, certain way of doing a number of different dishes. And then you come to Australia, and then you learn them all. And then you open a business, and then someone from Penang comes and eat your chakwe tiao, and they 
scream bloody murder. <laughs> Alright, so uh, this is something I just want to actually just kind of like mention um, a little bit because this is going to come up in future uh, stuff that I'm working on. Okay, just so you kind of like have a frame of reference of where I'm coming from. I was like that too when I came to Australia. And uh, for the first time I saw a recipe in a cookbook for Penang Cha Kui Diao. I was thinking that's not Cha Kui Diao because Cha Kui Diao should not look so pale. It should be, be using the thicker noodles and all that. So a lot of us, like I said, we live in a certain part of Malaysia and we have a certain expectation of how our favorite dishes should look like, whether it's Cha Kui Diao or Laksa or whatever else it is. And then you, 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 uh, when you're pulled out of the environment, you get a little bit of a culture shock. Okay, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about, and I'd love to cover that in my upcoming project, which is a uh, Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. <laughs> so make sure you, if you are not a part of my Malaysian Street Food uh, Kitchen, join the group, and we're going to actually have a community Zoom meetup with some of these people who are part of the Masters of Malaysian Cuisine universe. Okay, and we're going to tackle some of these issues head on along with some other I guess fairly combative issues I think okay so we've got the prawns and what we want we want to make some omelette okay this is my pan and see these in the meantime they have softened um, so omelette I've got eggs here and typically you would actually you would actually season the egg um, mix i don't usually bother even when i was doing it for my business <clears throat> i just crack the eggs beat them up and then fry them up okay you can add a little bit of water to the eggs as well which is something i think that a lot of people uh don't realize it kind of like helps it stretch a little bit okay hey Malini, how are you that's it. okay <laughs> okay so we've got the eggs let's beat this up and of course, I'm really, really disorganized. Okay, let's do this, okay? So if you want, you know, you can put a dash of soya sauce. That's a very uh, Malaysian Chinese thing to do. And a dash of pepper. Even a dash of sesame oil if you want. But usually, I don't bother, okay? You wanna stretch it out a little bit, make it a little bit fluffy. Just add a little bit of water to this, okay? And by the way guys, say hello. If I don't respond, it's probably because I, I don't see it because this has been shared out across like a number of different Facebook groups and timelines and whatever. But I'll try and go back and track down any of your questions and say hello back. Okay, so we've got this and the noodles. Like I said, look, just in a few minutes, they've gone completely soft. So you want to strain this out. Okay, so typically you would just pour this to a sieve or a colander. But we're going to try and avoid having to do that because it will require me to run into the kitchen. <laughs> Christopher, how are you? Okay. So you don't even need to soak it for this long, okay? I just kind of like was doing other stuff. I took my eyes off it because this is actually very, very soft now. So these noodles, you would usually just use hot water to soak them for a few minutes and then you can use them in a soup like broth or something like that or you can stir fry them, okay? So again, they're usually sold as rice vermicelli, rice sticks or dry rice noodles. You can see them. And these are actually different to mung bean noodles. Uh, the uh, bean fried noodles, people tend to get the two mixed up a little bit. These are a little more sturdy. Uh, mung bean threads are very, very thin and glass, or sometimes they're called glass noodles because they, they look like glass, they're like see-through and they're silky, silky soft, okay? So they're not, you don't want the glass noodles for this, you want the, uh, the um, rice noodles, okay? So let's heat this up. And if you've got some lemon juice, you can add a couple of squirts of lemon juice. And what we're going to add, we're going to first fry up the omelet, right? We've got the prawns over here. Let's put this aside. And 
We're gonna, uh, instead of our seasoning, we're going to use some chicken powder. <laughs> and we're going to use uh, a, a little bit of sugar and some pepper. And if you want a, a kind of like a, a little bit of a sour twist to this, you can have like lemon wedges that you can squeeze over them. Or you can just squirt some lemon juice through this, okay? When my, my stepmom does hers, no, it's just straight out like dried shrimp, rimpa, fried up with the noodles, and voila, that's it, okay? And I think it's got its own, I think, appeal, keeping it simple like that. Let me just get the pepper. Just came back from cleaning up the restaurant. Hey, Adeline, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. All right, so we're just heating this up. A little bit of water here. Okay, let's get my scraper. And we want a little bit of oil. So I'd love to hear from you uh, what version of Mi Siam you're most familiar with. Like I said, there are a few different versions and this is a different one to the one I used to do in my restaurant. But this one is, I think, like something that anyone can really pull off, even if you don't have dried shrimp. Just mince up some like small shrimp or something like that, and you know, and toss it in with your rumpa mixture. Okay. And by the way, guys, if you're interested in learning to cook in a uh, proper structured manner, make sure you check out my. Malaysian Street Food Academy where for a very very low uh, monthly subscription you get to access my Malaysian cooking course and also you get to be a part of this community where I hop on once a week to do a live Q&A a cooking demonstration usually um, is involved in the live Q&A and then once every month I do a master class okay I do a long form proper Malaysian dish that's usually fairly involved and I'll show you how to do it from start to finish from the perspective of a former Malaysian restaurant to myself, okay? So the idea is to scale up your cooking to the point where you can possibly, you know, not just impress your friends and family, but also potentially use it as a skill that, you know, for work or for your business or something like that. So check out my Malaysian Street Food Academy and the link is at uh, bit.ly slash Jackie M food all lowercase okay so I know a lot of there's a lot of stuff to remember but write it down bit.ly slash Jackie M food all lowercase it will take you to the uh, page that tells you what you get for being a member a monthly member of my Malaysian Street Food Academy okay so I've just been drying this up we're gonna throw some oil in here I haven't used this scan pan before this is actually my sister's it's, I just kind of came across and I thought oh this is a nicer pan than my usual what Okay, so a bit of oil, and we're just gonna dry up the egg, okay? Is there a nyonya version? Yes, the nyonya version is the, the one with the sauce. The, the misiam burkwa, misiam basa, I don't know if that's what they call it. I never came across the nyonya version until I came to Australia and started researching, like when I decided I wanted to learn how to cook Malaysian food, you know, the sort of stuff that I liked eating. All these cookbooks had these uh, misiam that I wasn't familiar with that came with a separate uh, sauce that was tamarind and um, uh, ground beans based and it was uh, yes slightly sound slightly sweet so I actually made that as a someone you know as a, on a, from a non-business perspective for personal consumption but when I actually ran my business I decided to stick with the dry version because that was to me the the version that I grew up eating and knowing okay Toy, how are you? Good morning from UK. How? <laughs> cool, cool. Melo, hey, I'm in your academy. I went, I went on a cooking class. Do members get notified? The oh yeah, they get notified 
uh, via Facebook, mate. I don't know if you uh, joined the Facebook group, Malaysian Street Food Academy Facebook group. And also there's a members area, but uh, I'll get Paul, my, my partner, Paul, uh, Paul, if you're listening, <laughs> uh, to actually send you an email with a link just in case you missed it previously that actually gives you access to the members area. That's where all the cooking lessons are based. So there are over 50 cooking lessons and they keep growing, okay? Uh, there's a, an Asian ingredients library, which is there forever. And there's also a members area where there are over 50 videos, but you get two videos every week, right? So two new videos every week. And, and then when you reach 50, there will be more <laughs> videos that will be added. But, um, and then separate to that, there's a Facebook group where I run my weekly Q and A's where I uh, basically tackle questions that people come up. Even during this broadcast, if you're part of my academy and you ask a question, as has happened in some of my other broadcasts, like last week I did chili crab, and people were asking, someone was asking, how would you make a, a, veg, a, a vegetarian version of the chili crab sauce? So I actually tackled that in my most recent Q&A in that group. Uh, there are a number of vegetarians and vegans in that group. And, um, and because they're the more active members and they're the ones who are always asking questions, it seems as though my Q&As tend to address a lot of questions around how you would turn something vegan or vegetarian. I did a, a Nasi Lemak masterclass few weeks ago and again people were asking about a vegan version of my nasi lemak which I've done before so I actually did a special Q&A where I showed you how to make vegan ikan bilis the dried, uh, the, the dried anchovy okay so these are the kind of stuff that we tackle outside the scope of like a Q&A uh, of a lockdown cook along like this okay so we've got the rumpa okay that's uh, again the garlic onion dried shrimp mix here and if you have chili you would add in that, add that in as well. If you were using fresh chilies, you would have blended it with this, right? So as always, I like to pre-fry this without the oil because of all the moisture in the onion, and then I add the oil afterwards. Okay? I don't know of any other chef who's done this, <laughs> but it seems like I'm the only one who does this, and it's just from like years and years of frustration of. Uh, cooking for a business and getting my hands all scalded and burned with oil splatter, right? So if you follow my Facebook stories, you'll see sometimes I post photos in there. Some of them are quite old. Uh, of <laughs> Jackie, I'm live behind the scenes what I get up to or what I have gotten up to before. But uh, I've had some very impressive cooking scars over the years. Okay. So you hear the sizzle, there's a lot of moisture in here so far. And we're going to fry this till the sizzling dissipates, okay? And then we're going to add the oil. And this is my chili, like I said, uh, any kind of chili will do, if you would, even if you're using bottled chili sauce. I don't want to get too carried away with how much I put in here because I don't want to start choking when I'm cooking. <laughs> okay. So you hear the sizzling. Hey Wendy, how are you? <laughs> Barani, hey, good to see you. Sandra, should add some full cream milk to make the omelette more fluffy. You can too if you want. <laughs> we don't use uh, milk a lot in our cooking, in all honesty. I, 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 I don't use, I don't <laughs> usually have any milk on standby at all in my place. But yeah, certainly you can do that. Okay, let's just turn this up a little bit. Okay, you hear the sizzling is dissipated. Let's add the oil now, yeah? Okay, now you want to fry this. As always, till the oil, uh, till the, the spice makes the oil separates from it, okay? Which basically means when the onion is browned and nice and caramelized and roasty and that sort of stuff, okay? A lot of people who hate eating onions, they associate onions with raw onions, okay? That's not how a lot of times we serve onion in our, we use onion in our recipes. In Malaysian cooking, we usually fry them, we roast them till they're brown and beautiful and, 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 and aromatic, okay? So we're going to fry this. And again, uh, ideally you want to serve this with some sambal, sambal blachan tumis, which are fried sambal blachan. 
Uh, but I'm not going to do it today uh, because like I said, I just did it two sessions ago. So go back to, if you're part of my Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, which is the free group, the Malaysian Street Food Academy is the paid group. Uh, if you're part of the Malaysian Street Food Kitchen free group, um, all my past cook, uh, cook alongs are actually organized there in a section in the group called uh, units. So go and have a look and go back to all the previous live videos. Yeah. And if you want the recipes, like I said, um, go and sign up bit.ly slash Jackie M cook along. That's where you can sign up to get emailed the recipes that I do in all my cooking. Okay. Well, in my cook along cooking, <laughs> they do eventually make their way to my website, but at the rate I'm going, I'm running severely behind. So it may take a while. It may take quite a few weeks to get there. If you want them right as soon as I publish them, right as soon as I, um, create the PDF for the recipe, then just sign up to that cook along link over there. Okay. So depending on how much chili you're using in here, this could look actually quite red, but I only just added a little bit, a couple of tablespoons in here. And I have, I mentioned my Where did my, <laughs> my herbs go? Okay, so like I said, if you're using bean sprouts at some point, you'll toss the bean sprouts in. I'm not because I don't have any. I've got some spring onion or scallions, as they call it in America, and some coriander here. Okay, these are very typical ingredients. And if you've got a uh, chives, garlic chives, that would be perfect for this. That's what I used to use when I served my 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 restaurant version of my mi siam, okay, so it did have chives in it. Okay, let's throw in the prawns. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Kirsten, hey, good, good to see you, Wendy. <laughs> Yeah, Cindy, post a picture of you cook it. I'd love to see it. Cindy is just awesome. <laughs> really. Talented cook. When she attempts my cook along in her apartment, she takes these like 50, <laughs> 50 photos and video clips. And her setup is a lot more impressive than mine. You can see that in my Malaysian Street Food Kitchen Facebook group. <clears throat> okay, so let's throw these in. I'm not going to use all of this. I don't need that much. Okay, so you saw <coughs> in that particular pack of the you know, right? They came in cakes like this. Okay, this particular type, this particular brand comes in like three, three strips, three cakes per pack, and they'll all be different. Okay, some of them come in smaller cakes, but this one, this is basically two, two pieces that I put in here, which would have been enough for about six serves, I would think. This would be enough for about three serves, three not too enormous serves, right? And if you've got other stuff in your fridge, like frozen um, <coughs> fish balls or something like that, or fish cake slices, you can throw it in. And the other ingredient you would typically use are tofu, okay? Firm tofu, not soft tofu. Again, I don't have any here today, so I've left it out. But firm tofu is a very typical ingredient you would add to this, okay? Now, if you were doing a vegan version of this, obviously no egg, but the tofu would be good. And the other ingredient, if you were doing it vegan, 
would be this, okay, in lieu of dried shrimp. I don't have a packet for this, but you see this? This is actually um, minced preserved radish. I'll show you what it looks like. And usually they come in like plastic bags. You see it? You know what it is? It's actually the stuff that uh, they put in Thai, okay? So this is actually a Thai ingredient. Well, the way they've done it, I mean, we Malaysians, we Chinese have our own versions of preserved radish. They're not usually minced like that, okay? The minced version is usually from Thailand because they use it in Pad Thai. It gives it a nice, salty, sweet, crunchy texture to your Pad Thai. And that will work really well in here, especially if you're doing a vegan version. Okay, something to keep in mind. Have a look in your grocery store next time you go shopping. Okay, so with this particular mesia, the noodles get broken up naturally, and that's fine, okay? There are certain types of Chinese dishes where, Chinese noodles dishes, where superstition dictates that you don't break up the noodles, okay? Because to them, breaking up the noodles, because um, noodles are long, you want to keep them long because they symbolize long life. If you break them up, it's kind of like you're <laughs> wishing bad luck on them. But not mee siam, okay? Mee siam is fine. Not that I believe any of that, but just as a point of, uh, you know, cultural interest. <laughs> so some of the seasoning will be um, from the dried shrimp because they're salty. Um, but you can add other stuff to it. You can add fish sauce. I'm going to add some chicken powder, okay, because you know my love affair with chicken powder. Uh, it does contain MSG. Uh, and if you want a little bit of a hint of sweetness, you can add a little bit of sugar. Okay, not much. Not like it's not like negro Thai negro sweet. Okay, it's just kind of like to cut through some of the savouriness. Um, if I if I wanted to, I could put some fish sauce in here or some soya sauce. Okay, uh, since moving to Australia, I've been more inclined to use fish sauce over soya sauce. In my part of Malaysia, we did not use fish sauce in our cooking. I know in Penang they do. But in Serumban, I never, I never actually had fish sauce in any of my food, okay? Now, if you want a little bit of sourness, you can add a couple of squirts of lemon juice. I also put a little bit of tamarind juice, okay, in here. But it is not necessary, like I said. Um, my mom's version, which is very popular, does not have that. It's just straight out. She probably just puts fish sauce in it, really, in all honesty and no sugar okay so these are all the different ways you can play around with this recipe and again my restaurant version would have that ground bean paste in there okay but i don't in here okay i just don't want to make it any more complicated than it needs to be let's just taste test this a little bit okay the saltiness seems fine Try a little bit more. Okay, let's just put this on hold a little bit. And let's just cut up some of these spring onion. Okay, if you have chives, garlic chives, not uh, western chives, you would use that okay and if you've got bean sprouts you would add it about now and toss it in just fold it in okay and let's just cut up our egg Yeah, if you're part of my Malaysian street food kitchen, if you're not joining it, it's, we have so much fun there. It's not just another recipe sharing site, but we have a great community vibe there because we run these weekly Zoom hangouts with our community members and we just um, talk about food, talk about Malaysia, talk about our memories of Malaysia. And it's funny because last week we were doing just like that. When um, So I just cut these into strips and we talked about our memories of Malaysia and the topic got, came to... Penang and it came to my ex-boyfriend, my first boyfriend was actually from Penang and the person, oops, 
I hope my power does not cut out. I, I we had a power outage here in Sydney just a few hours ago for a few hours. So if it cuts out, you will know why. Okay, but yeah, they were talking about my. Uh, I was talking about my ex-boyfriend and the woman in the panel next to me in our Zoom session. Um, out of blue, said she knew who it was. Just someone I've never met in real life. Just completely random mention. And sure enough, she did know who it was. So after more than 30 years, <laughs> I found my, my ex-boyfriend by a random Zoom session mentioned, Hey Rose, how are you? Not right, not right. You used to buy your Kuwait Tia from Concord. Oh wow, small world. So delicious. I was so disappointed when you closed down. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I closed my restaurant a few years ago to look after my son Noah, who's uh, uh, classified as severely uh, disabled. Right, um, but this is what I do nowadays. You want to eat my food, you learn how to cook, okay? Let's dish this up. Okay, so this is spicy and it's uh, got dried shrimp in it, and it's got fresh shrimp in it, it's got egg in it, and typically if I was serving this in my restaurant, I wouldn't toss the shredded egg omelette in there, I would actually cut it and then put it on top, okay, so that it shows up better. And like I said, you know, if you've got some more blachan, let me actually, let me just go and get some of that. If you've got other seafood, use that as well. If you've got squid rings, that'll be a nice addition to this, okay? There's a little bit of sambal here, okay? It doesn't look particularly colorful. So let's get some uh, chilies for this. Okay. Some sliced chilies. Okay. Voila, that's a mise Okay. How long did that take? That takes that took like half an hour or so, just over half an hour. Plus all the chatting as well. Okay, so this is so 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 easy to pull together. Like I said, a very simple Malaysian mee siam that I think most people would be able to pull off. Again, look for these uh, rice sticks or rice vermicelli at your supermarket. Like I said, anything that looks like this will work. Just soak it in some water. Okay, so they look very similar to Pad Thai, but they're skinny. Pad Thai would be a little bit broader. Um, I guess you can actually attempt this using Pad Thai. Um, hey Liz, how are you? Good morning. <laughs> I wish I could smell the mee hoon siam. Thank you so much. <laughs> Alright guys, um, <clears throat> again if you want the recipe, sign up bit.ly slash Jackie and cook along all lowercase and um, make sure you join my free Facebook group, Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. Uh, just look on my Facebook <laughs> account, my my personal Facebook profile, Jackie M. Tang, and the cover page will have a link to my Malaysian Street Food Kitchen free group. And this weekend, we're going to have a community meetup where we're actually going to talk about what the Masters of Malaysian Cuisine project is all about. And you'll get to meet some of these people who are part of the Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. They're talking about some of the biggest names in Malaysian food. They're talking about Norman Musa. Norman Musa is a household name if you know anything about Malaysian cooking. He's based in the Netherlands. We've got uh, Chef Johari Idrus. Jo Johari Idrus is a five-time Master Chef Malaysia judge. And then we've got um, Zaleha Alpin of MasterChef UK's uh, Crispy Rendang Controversy. So a bunch of us are uh, in part of in this group called the Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and we're launching something very, very exciting. And you'll get to meet some of us if you join my Facebook group this weekend. Uh, we're running a Zoom session where you can actually join and ask them questions and talk to them, interact with them. This is going to be so exciting. So I look forward to seeing you. Um, and uh, thanks so much for uh, checking out my cook along and I look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, okay. Ciao. And don't forget to check out my paid cooking community if you're interested in learning how to cook Malaysian food properly from a <laughs> from a Malaysian restaurant. Okay. See you guys. Ciao.